Hello everyone, welcome back to this video tutorial series on Open3D and Python for processing and registering point cloud data. This video is part of a tutorial series that looks, looks at the whole general workflow of processing and dealing with point cloud data. In our last videos, we looked at how we can pre-process point cloud data. And in this video specifically, we'll be focusing on registration methods for registering point cloud data. I will be linking those uh, videos below, the playlist below, as well as the Medium articles that this video is based off on. In this video, we will be looking at what registration is and its different types. We will learn about global versus local registration. We will look at the different types of iterative closest point methods, as well as work with those different methods, whether it's point to point or point to plane. Now that we had a look at the different approaches for pre-processing the point cloud data, which is our first step in the general workflow of dealing in with uh, point cloud data, we will be looking at how we can register point cloud data. But what is registration? What is the reason or the main reason behind it? So let's imagine we have a LiDAR scanner that moves along the room and it takes different snippets of uh, you know, the objects in the room at different angles at different time intervals. But how can we have a bigger picture of what this uh, LiDAR scanner is trying to give us, like a map of the whole room? How can we do that? How can we stitch those uh, different point clouds at different positions, at different time points in space, and get a, a well-rounded uh, understanding of the environment that it's scanned, which is a map? So starting with the first approach that we will be talking about when exploring the different registration methods out there, it's the iterative closest point. And it's the one that we will be focusing on in this video, as it's the most, uh, let's say, popular method out there. And it, what it does is it, sen it's, it essentially keeps one point cloud, which is the source or the reference, fixed. It then takes one point cloud which is the source as a reference and it transforms which is usually a combination of translation and rotating rotation it rotates the other point cloud on top of it to best match the reference the next type of um, registration method is the normal distribution transform and it essentially registers two point clouds by first associating a piecewise normal distribution to the first point cloud and that gives the probability of a sampling point belonging to the cloud at a given spatial coordinate. And then it finds a transform that maps the second point cloud to the first by maximizing the likelihood of the second point cloud on such distribution as a function of the transform parameters. The third uh, approach to registration is known as phase correlation, and it is an image matching algorithm based on the Fourier shift property, which states that the translation shift between two similar images generates a linear phase difference in the Fourier frequency domain. And essentially that's exactly what happens when we are uh, working with phase correlation with two point clouds. And also the final, uh, let's say, approach that we will be talking about uh, in terms of registration methods is the feature-based. And in this method, Stochastic or a functional model will try to use points, lines, or planes, or other features as a way to estimate the 3D spatial similarity uh, in which we can produce those transformation properties that allows us to, to make sure that those two point clouds are aligned. In this video, however, we will be looking at the ICP registration, the iterative closest point registration method. So as we've mentioned, during the ICP registration, one of the two point clouds is kept as reference and it's the source, while we are trying to transform, which is the combination of translation and rotation of another point cloud known as the target to roughly align the point clouds on top of each other. The output is a refined transformation. So when we perform the ICP, we're getting the transformation that allows for that alignment to occur. It's a matrix that allows for that alignment to occur. And there are two ICP variants, the point-to-point -point ICP and the point-to-plane ICP. The point-to-point -point ICP 
and the pointer plane are very similar in concept. The main change is the cost function. The cost function essentially is the technique for evaluating the performance of this algorithm that we're dealing with. And the ICP algorithm, what it does is it's trying to align two point clouds on top of each other, and it produces the transformation that allows for that alignment, right? So how can we measure if we're going into the correct direction or we're or the algorithm is doing a bad job. We can do that through the cost function. And so the cost function is a very important uh, aspect of these algorithms. And so the difference between the point to point and point to plane lies in that cost function. So unlike point to point, where we're looking at the closest point to the other point to cloud, so we're matching the distances or we're trying to find the minimum square distances between these points and point to plane in addition to that we're taking the normal information into account so we do so through computing surface normals on the target point cloud and then project the error vector and take the dot product with the Euclidean distances between the points on the source and target point clouds so when we look at the cost function equations, we see that for the point-to-point -point and point-to-plane, we're trying to minimize the Euclidean distance between the target and source point clouds of each point in those point clouds. And we, in this equation, denote uh, the target point cloud as y and the source point cloud as x. And in addition to that, taking the difference of those two points, for the point-to-plane, we're taking into account the normal of those target point cloud data and we're taking it into account through using the dot product of that normal with the difference between the um, difference between the distances or the distance between those points but before we get to coding it's very important to clarify that there are two types of registrations as well and it's the global registration and local registration so when we register point clouds, usually what happens is we first apply a global registration. And the global registration, what it essentially does is that it uh, helps us reach a global local, uh, I mean, a global error minimum. So when we are trying to register two point clouds, it might be very difficult through just the local registration alone to fully align those two point clouds because we are yes we are uh, converging to a local minimum however this local minimum is not the global minimum and so to mitigate that what we usually do is we first register these point clouds uh, using a global registration method that allows us to get closer to the global minimum and then with the help of local registration methods such as the ICP, we are converging to the uh, global minimum more efficiently and we're accurately registering these two point clouds. So it's very important to use it to use the global registration as a approximate alignment as an initial step and then apply the local methods, local registration methods for more fine-tuned results. In this video, we will not dive into how global registration works, because if we do that, it's going to be a very long video. So we will keep that for another video. But what we've essentially done is that we took these two point clouds that we're going to deal with in the code, and we've aligned them roughly through a global registration method, and we took the transformation that allowed for that alignment to occur, and we used it as the initial transformation that we will work with. And then we're going to apply the local registration method, the iterative closest point, the ICP. And we're going to apply the two types of ICP that we've looked at today, which is the point to point and the point to plane. So let's get to coding. Uh, as we've always done in our previous videos, we first need to pip install Open3D if we are going to use a brand new Google Collab Notebook, or we're going to start using a session that has been previously terminated, or we're just starting a new session, then we need to install uh, Open3D. And so, when, so if I run, I went ahead and run this command. So first things first, what we will do is we will import the necessary libraries and then read um, the source and target uh, point cloud data. And since we're trying to 
let's say, simulate the effect of iterative closest point or ISP, we will be using Open3D's uh, dataset, which is the demo ICP point clouds dataset that comes uh, with two paths to read from, one concerning the source data cloud, point cloud data, I mean, and the other concerning the target point cloud data. And so when I run this, which I've already done, I will have read the point cloud data for from these two separate paths of the demo ICP point clouds. And then I will try to visualize the both point clouds to see what is the difference through what we've learned so far in our series through the draw underscore plotly and I'll see what we've uh, what we've uh, imported in through the data method. And we can see that we have the Redwood dataset uh, that we previously worked with in different angles. So this is the source cloud, okay? This is the source cloud at a certain angle. And when I scroll down, I have the other point cloud from a different angle. We can see that this is the same room, Oops, sorry. This is the same room, but at different angles. Now, within the um, within Open Three D's documentation, they've created a function called the draw registration result, and this is different from the draw underscore plotly, uh, in in which it can help us visualize the source and target uh, point clouds on top of each other. So we can see both point clouds and their relative positions on top of each other. So what this does is it takes a copy of the source data cloud and the target data cloud, and then it colors those data clouds into different colors, one that's yellow and one that's blue. And then through a transformation, it will, tr it will uh, put these two data clouds or point clouds on top of each other and then it will draw that uh, the result of that transformation. So this function basically accepts a source point cloud, a target point cloud as arguments, as well as an initial transformation so that it can align those point clouds on top of each other and visualize them. So let's initialize or provide an initial registration for visualizing these point clouds on top of each other. And this actually has been obtained through a global registration algorithm. And we will use this transformation to draw the source point cloud and the target point cloud on top of each other using that transformation. And this transformation is the result of a global registration algorithm, as I've mentioned uh, prior, where this global registration method aimed to produce a transformation that would roughly align these two point clouds together in a manner that might bring it closer to a global error minimum, uh, as the iterative closest point is not a, a global registration, but it is a local registration. So what? So this global registration essentially is giving the ICP a push, it's making, uh, it's, it's producing a transformation that will help us align those two point clouds so that when we apply the ICP, we can get a more fine-tuned transformation that can help us align them exactly on top of each other. With the transformation that we've initialized and obtained from a global registration method, we can calculate how efficient the results of the global registration alone can be through the use of the evaluate underscore registration function. It accepts four arguments, the source point cloud and the target point cloud, as well as the threshold or the maximum correspondence distance we can allow and the transformation. And this transformation is going to be the one of the global registration that we've specified here above. So when we go ahead and run this, we get two results. We get the fitness result and the in inlier underscore RMSE, which is the inlier root mean square error. And of course, the higher the fitness sc score, which is the 
overlapping area between the inlier correspondences and the number of points in the target, the higher the score, the more overlapping area there is. So the higher, the better. Uh, as for the inlier root mean square error, of course, as we get lower values for the error, the better the registration results are. Now, we get these results for the inlier underscore RMSE and the fitness score, but for us to get a better score when we can fine-tune this registration process through a local registration method, which is the iterative closest point. So let's start. To, to apply the, the ICP or the iterative closest point, we would need to use the registration method and specify the type of registration as registration underscore ICP. And this accepts four arguments, or let's say five arguments, the source, point cloud, the target point cloud, the threshold as we've mentioned, uh, as we've uh, specified above, the initial trans transformation that we've obtained from using the global registration method, and the type of iterative closest point that we're trying to use. We have two types of registrations or method of registrations using the ICP. We have the registration point to point and the registration point to plane. So we will be go using the uh, point to point first in this exercise. And what we do is we just specify it over here and then we will print the results and we will draw the results through using the function draw registration result, specify the point clouds, the source and target point clouds. And of course, rather than using the initial transformation that we've obtained from a global transformation, we will use the one that we've obtained from registering these two point clouds together through the iterative closest point. And so when I run this, I should get a more overlapping point cloud or more overlapping source and target point clouds. So this is the transformation that we will be applying as we've printed it out here. And we will be using this transformation as input in our draw underscore registration underscore result function to obtain that image of those two point clouds, one that's blue, one that's yellow, on top of each other, and it should be more fine-tuned. So let's use the same evaluate underscore registration method to evaluate our uh, transformation with the new transformation, the one that's, that we obtained from the registration underscore point to point. We should get an evaluation, so we get a much better fitness score. We get about 0.3724495 for the fitness score over here, and we have 0 0.0. 0.77601179, which is much better than the high uh, value over here, which is 0 0.01. This is 0 0.007. So, of course, ICP did a better job than just the global registration alone. And while we work with the registration and we print out the results, we can see that the the results of this, of applying the registration underscore ICP, we get the fitness and RMSE errors over here printed out. So we can either print out the results of the of using the pipelines registration method, or through what we've learned previously through the evaluate underscore registration by just amending the whole function by inserting the appropriate transformation, we can get the evaluation results. And finally, what if we wanted to use the other method of point, uh, ICP, which is point to plane rather than point to point? We can go ahead and use the same code by just amending just a small section of that code from point to point to point to plane. And when I run this, I will 
since I printed out the results, I will not only print the transformation, but the results of the uh, registration. And we can see that the fitness score is much higher. It's 0.6209, which is much higher than 0.3. And we get a lower RMSE score of point. Here we get a, a 0.7, a 0.007, I mean. And here we get a much lower score of 0.0065. So we get a much lower RMSE score. In the next videos, we will be looking at how and what is global registration. And we will be understanding the rest of the point cloud processing workflow. So stay tuned for the next few videos. And as always, thank you for watching.